Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. As you can see, this is a talking head video, and the reason for that is because NVIDIA just announced their next generation GPU architecture. And I wanted to get all the information out there as quickly as I could, plus there's a ton of it, so let's get started. First up, the architecture itself is in fact called Ampere, which shouldn't be a surprise to most of you because if you've been following the channel, you've known that for a good while now. Not only that, but NVIDIA also confirmed what we figured would come, which is the GA100 GPU that is featured in this A100 accelerator. Now, unfortunately, there is a lot of misinformation out there, and unfortunately, NVIDIA didn't really help all that much with their press release, but I've been diving into it, trying to figure everything out for quite a few hours now. So I'm gonna go over that with you, but with that said, the main focus is gonna be on the architecture and how that translates to improvements. Now, starting things off, the new architecture is in fact 7 nanometers, which is what we've been hearing for a little while now, but after quite a bit of digging, you can see that it's TSMC's N7 process, and they actually say this in a couple of their dev blogs on NVIDIA's site, so this is the official news, and that's kind of unfortunate just because the N7 is the first generation 7 nanometer tech from TSMC, and that's the same node that the new Epic is on, Ryzen 3000 is on, as well as RDNA 1 GPUs. So it isn't the seven nanometer plus EUV, which one of the reasons that's kind of unfortunate is because in the uh, recent leak that I went over, they actually claim that this was a seven nanometer EUV. Now there is a chance that they're gonna change that for the gaming cards, but as what we've seen, Nvidia has confirmed that unlike last time, Ampere is gonna be through all of their GPUs, so we're talking the gaming cards and everything, it's gonna have one architecture versus last gen where uh, the Accelerator V100 was based on Volta, and then the later Quadron gaming cards were based on Turing. So I highly doubt that they would use a different process, which kind of makes things not look so great for these uh, earlier rumors or leaks, depending on whether, I guess you could say they're true or not, but, um. That is one sad thing, although there is some things that make it look kind of good. So anyway, let's keep going. OK, starting things off, the really good news is that just like AMD's Ryzen 3000 going from 2000 to 3000, this is a pretty great jump in node. And as we know, Turing was already using 12 nanometers. So this being seven nanometers, they are able to get over double. I believe it's yes. 2.5 times the transistors when compared to uh, Volta, and they did that by making it only 1.3% bigger. Now, with that said, this is a massive card, 826 millimeters squared, huge. Next up, we can see that it comes with 6,912 CUDA cores, which is actually really interesting because if we go to a recent video that I did, actually not that recent, it was March 1st, we can see that there was a leak for the upcoming Ampere card that had 6,912 CUDA cores. And what's even more interesting about this is that it comes with 47 gigabytes of memory, which we all just assumed that it kind of read it wrong and it was 48. And I really believe that was correct. Because if we were to go, we can see that the GPU memory comes with 40 gigabytes. But the interesting thing, and this is kind of part of some of the misinformation that's going out there, is because it's supposed to come with six HBM2E memory modules with eight gigabytes. But it also says that it comes with six memory modules for HBM2E, which since they're eight gigabytes, that obviously doesn't add up. Well, just like we've seen in the past, what it is is this one only comes with five, but it can get up to six, which would explain why this one right here actually had 48 gigabytes of memory. So this leak was basically correct, even though we saw it quite a while back. Now, next up, and probably the most interesting bit of news is actually, um, I'm gonna do this because it gives a good side-by-side -side comparison, is actually the tensor cores. The new GA100 only comes with 432 versus 640 in the GV100, so a significant loss. The reason for that is actually because there's only four tensor cores per SM versus the old eight. Now, you're probably wondering why that isn't in half, and that's because there are, in fact, more SMs uh, in this GPU versus last time. And the really interesting part here is that even with such a significant drop in tensor cores, they are getting 
better performance. As we can see here, the FP16 gets up to five times the throughput. And the reason I'm particularly pointing at the FP16 instead of, you know, 20 times the FP32 is because before uh, the V100 could only use the tensor cores with FP16 input. And that's the really interesting part about these new tensor cores. They're actually able to uh, accelerate both FP32 and FP64. And if we look right here, you can kind of see how they do it. They have an eight, the excuse me, the new, they're calling it tensor float 32. It has an 8-bit range, so it's actually able to input 32-bit and output 32-bit. While before, it was only FP16 input, and then it would output 32, but at the same time, it had to have an FP16 input. With that said, the precision is reduced by quite a bit, but one maybe, maybe possible thing, and if it is possible, it would be massive, but... Keep in mind that FP32 or single floating point computations are exactly what games use. Basically, maybe there's a chance, maybe because this can receive FP32 input and output at FP32. And, and I keep saying that because I am pretty sure that it still does require matrix math, basically. So it likely won't work. But if there's a chance we could see giant performance games if they could use tensor cores on FP32 workloads for games. I mean, we're talking up to 20 times the throughput, but of course, I really don't think that'll happen, but it is really interesting. They're now able to use tensor cores to accelerate not only FP32 compute, but also FP64. So we're talking up to 2.5 times throughput of FP64, up to 20 times of FP32. And once again, it gets up to five times FP16, and yet, there's significantly less cores. So their new third generation tensor cores are incredibly impressive. And the reason I say that is because it, it just goes to show that you can make some massive strides, especially with this kind of new tech as they're figuring it out, they can make giant strides without going down in uh, nanometer, just purely architectural changes. And the reason I say that is because the recent rumors from Moore's Law is Dead has shown us that there's a chance Ampere will get up to four times the ray tracing performance versus Turing. And all of that kind of hinges on more of an architectural change because obviously you're not going to get four times the FP32. Well, unless, you know, this TF32 thing can somehow translate into gaming, but regardless, normal FP32 compute, there's no way it's gonna get four times that. But we could see something like that since these new ray tracing cores are very new and Nvidia is probably still figuring some things out to better optimize it and just get it to work all around better. So that really does show the potential that we could be seeing with ray tracing cores. Not to mention the fact that it went up in transistors so much so there's a ton more room the fact that uh it went up in CUDA cores by over third by, uh, not over i think it was like right at 35 percent so i mean there absolutely is massive potential for nvidia's next gen and pure gpus with that said one rumor that's almost definitely not true now which i was very doubtful to begin with is the rumor that stated that the 3080 ti was actually going to be built from the ga100 and the reason why is because for one, the G100 has uh, HPM2E memory, and I believe NVIDIA CEO specifically stated, I don't really know what that article is, but basically he flat out stated that uh, HPM2E is not for gaming. So obviously this card is not going to be the one used. It will be a GA102 almost certainly. So those rumors that said that, like I said, pretty much not true. Oh, and also back to the ray tracing cores, I did want to mention that just like the V100, I don't believe that this actually comes with RT cores, and that's because this really is made for acceleration. So it isn't going to be, uh, you know, designing things or, you know, anything like that. It's, it's an AI card, basically. So there's no need for it. So unfortunately, we don't know what type of improvement we can get definitively. But at the same time, like I said, with the tensor core jump, it really could be big. Anyway, while that does it, I know I did a lot of rambling there. Hopefully you liked it, but basically this new GPU is absolutely impressive. Unfortunately, it's not based on seven nanometer EUV, but still the jump from 12 nanometers to TSMC seven nanometers is huge. So we should see some really big improvements here. But anyway, if you liked the video, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.